Last year, the European Union implemented a new wide participatory exercise called the Conference on the Future of Europe, asking citizens to share their views on the future of the Union. But the conference was only one of the opportunities that European citizens have to influence decision-making processes at the EU level. We are in Brussels today to speak with EU policymakers and experts and learn more about these participatory tools. Well, the European Union over the years has created many opportunities for citizens to engage and influence uh, the institutions. Um, some of them, they date back to the 1950s, like the petitions to the European Parliament. Some are like complaints to the European Ombudsman, complaints to the Commission. Some others are more recent, like the European Citizen Initiatives. So we can see the EU public consultations of the European Commission. We have uh, the um, petitions to the European Parliament and of course the European Citizens Initiative. The second category I would say is that the EU is also funding a lot of uh, projects that are being implemented for example by civil society organizations, by universities, so I'm talking about all of those funding programs such as the Horizon, Europe for Citizens, Erasmus Plus, etc. And many times in those proposals there have been experimentations and piloting of uh, participatory democracy methods. The third category that I researched a few years ago, which was quite interesting and maybe not very well known, is the direct uh, link between MEPs and their constituents. So certain MEPs that I managed to, to uh, uh, interview have told me that they used, for example, digital platforms in order to allow their constituents, their citizens, basically to work together with them on own initiative reports. Another way for citizens to influence EU policy was the Conference on the Future of Europe, which brought together 800 selected citizens in a European-wide deliberative exercise. The Conference on the Future of Europe, I think, opened a bit of a Pandora's box uh, by showing that not only the member states uh, retain uh, power and authority and legitimacy on the European process, but also citizens do have a role to play. And this is new. So this has certainly been raising some eyebrows in the European capitals. And at the deeper level, I think deliberative democracy also question the notion of, of representation. First of all, as you know, uh, conference as such is over and we had follow-up event in December, which was uh, very good. But uh, if you ask me about follow-up, uh, it is uh, citizens' panels. So citizens' panels uh, were uh, announced by our President von der Leyen during her State of the Union speech for ahead of each big, big legislation process. So what we did, uh, in fact, we organized first panel on food waste, uh, which means we selected randomly citizens again. So there are 150 citizens from all over European Union, from different uh, uh, strata of society, different ages, gender balanced, and they, uh, had, always, they had already twi two meetings, one online, one in person, on food waste. So, and we are taking their ideas into consideration while drafting our papers, our policy papers. The Conference for the Future of Europe was successful for a first reunion of this kind. But of course, we also learned that we can improve the mechanism for these types of uh, open discussions and participatory uh, mechanisms. For that, we need to make sure again more, that more people are attending such formats of interaction, make sure that the online tools that we are using are actually part of the conversation and of the outcomes, but also we have to deliver at the end, because otherwise people would not trust us anymore in participating to these types of formats. But to make sure people attend and participate, they need to be informed about the participatory and deliberative tools and modalities. To be frank, I think they don't know enough and uh, it's about communication. We really communicate, we communicated, we are communicating all the time, but still I think that citizens think uh, they don't believe in it, those who were not involved, they think that this is not true. But as you know, we had the 24 languages uh, multilingual Dig digital platform. Now we transform this platform into a new portal, which is one uh, stop shop called Have Your Say. So everything is there and you can communicate via this Have Your 
say. So citizens uh, should be better informed. It's not only on me, on us. I am in charge of democracy, but we have uh, 27 representat representation offices in different member states, and we have also uh, Europe Direct. We have many different uh, tools how to make uh, our European citizens uh, aware of the uh, of these existing tools. But still, I think uh, we need a lot. We need a lot to do. There is a lot to do. It is, it is pretty clear that as of now the European institutions haven't been very keen on promoting those tools. Uh, in my research I even identify evidence suggesting that um, the institutions and political leadership has been kind of cautious uh, in promoting the tools uh, that were created over time because they might alter uh, decision making, they might even alter the institutional balance, what the Commission can do, what the Parliament can do, what the Council can do. In other words, we are and we have been in a process in which uh, the players calling the shots in the institutions have always been the governments um, and not the citizens. But what happens if all of a sudden citizens gain a voice by using this, this, this participatory channel? That's all from Brussels. We will continue to cover citizens' panels and other participatory tools at European, national and local level.